Okay, good morning. Uh, I have a um, good morning to all of you. Uh, I hope those who will be um, joining through the link uh, will be able to access this class. And uh, yesterday, of course, we didn't have the class. But the previous Sunday, uh, we had a class where we discussed a lot on how actually when the publication is uh, uh, in, in the production of corporate publication, we discussed about the first stage of what exactly happens uh, uh, before we really go for uh, other aspects. So what happens in the first uh, stage is to gather all the material, the text content and everything, and then put them in proper order. Then we also should also keep in mind many factors like how it is, uh, um, how it is uh, useful. I mean, uh, uh, for the audience, who is the audience and what is the purpose for which you're bringing out a publication should be known uh, very clearly uh, to the uh, to the PROs who are bringing out the publication. There's no point if the audience doesn't receive your publication. It is a waste of time and as well as the money also. So you're spending considerable amount of money when you're bringing out a publication. It can be anything. It can be a poster or a so we have seen uh, different types of publications in the earlier block uh, where we, we, we discussed why we select a particular uh, publication and for what purpose. And we also discussed the publications can be like a simple pamphlet, booklet, brochure, pam, uh, you know, I mean, um, what you call it as poster, annual report, diary, uh, manuals, handbooks, catalogs, so folders, all these things are constitute different types of publication. So the public relation uh, um, uh, manager, the PRO is in, in, uh, endowed with the responsibility of bringing out the production of producing the publication. He may not be responsible at every stage of uh, this being, but he has a managerial uh, responsibility where he can assign uh, these tasks uh, of, uh, you know, pre Press, we call it as before designing everything, gathering the material and everything. He can design it. So he can have under him uh, editorial assistants who will take care of collection of material like gathering the content and everything. He can have a, a photographer who will be able to help uh, help in giving the photograph. He can also have an artist who can give some special drawings or title covers or even cartoons. He can have like that also. So then there are many people who work under a PRO uh, in a very cohesive manner uh, to ensure uh, that a publication is brought out uh, uh, successfully. So this is very essential for him. So the PRO success depends not on himself, but on his entire team, who only when they act in tandem uh, will be able to uh, decide the success of a publication, and which in turn enhances the uh, corporate image of an organization. So if you take any corporate bodies, MNCs, uh, if you go through some of their printed literature, some of their printed publications, you will feel so attracted, uh, you will feel so convinced with the information given, you will feel uh, totally persuaded to uh, believe in the product that they bring out. Uh, so this is the very, and you will be able to have a good image uh, in the public also. So the PRO is in a position to uh, create a very positive image in the public, even through a small thing like a publication. And we have seen what are the different types of publication. We dealt in the earlier class mostly with the text part of it. Please remember that every publication, be it a newspaper like I'm showing you now here, every publication has what is known as the text part of it. The text means all the content, the text matter that you type it. This, all this is the text. But you should also know that we also have another component, which is the most important component, namely the illustration. So this is an illustration, 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 illustration. In an advertisement, we'll discuss that later, in illustration. So in a newspaper, for instance, you have illustrations. Everywhere you have illustrations. Let us take, for instance, I have a table calendar. So I'll show you, for instance, here also. It is not a simple table calendar. They also, for instance, uh, uh, put some illustration of what they want to do. So please remember that they do have uh, what you can, it can be an illustration, it can be an artwork. So here is an illustration. 
So here is an illustration. Like that, we can have uh, uh, illustrations uh, uh, which help you to do what is the purpose of this illustration? Why should we have an illustration um, uh, for us, actually? This is very essential for us to know that illustrations are like, uh, they say that uh, one illustration is equal to 1,000 photographs. So that is the impact it can actually create. And these are the illustrations that the, the, the PRO receives as part of the material for the publication that he tries to bring out. So sometimes, you know, if you take a house journal in the center of the thing, you have uh, the, the first eight page uh, house journal in fourth and fifth page. When it is opened, actually when it's opened up, you will find that uh, uh, the all photographs of an event of the organization are put there. We call that as a photo montage, a collection of photographs. And then there may be a little bit of thing right below the photograph. What is that called? I'll let you know when we come. But how do they get these photographs? So there is one thing known as uh, all this material is obtained in two ways. So one is known as the, the original. Okay, one is known as the original, the artwork. Let me just get you, uh, I'll take a, one, just a few seconds to get you that material. One minute only, okay? Oh, sorry, I had to go and get that uh, sample. That's why. I, so, for instance, take your house journal. So, one of the employees' wives has prepared, for instance, an artwork. She prepared with her own hands one artwork. So, you get uh, uh, originals or uh, artworks or illustrations in this form also. So, you're getting this in this form, an illustration or uh, uh, a painting, for instance, a watercolor, oil painting, crane drawing, or simply... Uh, black and white, uh, uh, black pencil, or uh, simply pencil colors. Uh, so you can get illustrations like this, uh, and this is on, on a on a on a paper. It has been taken on a paper, on simply a paper. And because this is a paper, it is known as what is called as uh, one. It is known as uh, a reflection copy. So because the light is falling on the sheet and it is getting reflected, you are able to see. That is one type of illustration. So a passport size photograph, somebody will give you. Somebody will give you an artwork like this. MF Hussein may give something else. So people give you artworks, line work. RK Lakshman used to draw cartoon in black and white. And he used to give away to the press, to the editor. So all these illustrations are collected in this form as well as. Sometimes what happens, photographers also give you a small film. It can be in the form of a film, which we call it as a transmission illustration. So this is known as a, uh, what you call it as a reflection uh, original. Reflection because it is reflected from this. So in a paper, in a positive, it can be a bromide, it can be an ordinary paper. So here is an artwork, a painting, for instance, okay? Or an ordinary passport size photograph that you give for publication. That is also a reflection copy. Or sometimes what happens, uh, you also do one thing. What you do, you can give one instance a color photo of yours in a film form. Sometimes we get a transparency. Now you know all of you know how what exactly the transparency. All of you might have seen in a good old. Uh, in nowadays, of course, we we don't have that because they are out there. Earlier we used to get a, a slides. So slide projector low. We we put this film and the light passes through the illustration and it is screened on that. So here you get in the form of that also. And that can also be used for producing illustrations for your publication. This is very essential. So we have two types. One is known as the reflection and the other one is known as the transmission illustrations. It can be in the form of a film based. That is in the form of film. It may be in 35 mm film or 70 mm film. But the point is that that film is used to used for getting our illustration onto our publication. So we have mechanism, we have technology to do that. But nowadays it's entirely a different aspect. We have entered into a, 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 a you know, the earlier analog technology to digital technology. So the whole paradigm has shifted. 
And but it is essential for you to know why. But why should I know, sir, when it is already outdated, when it is obsolete? Why should I know? Yes, this is very essential because let us assume that you are writing a a very good story on the founder of your organization who is no more. Now he might have died in 1950s or 60s. At that time, he might have been having his photographs in the form of either a uh, reflection copy or in the form of a small transparency because in those days, digital technology never used to be there. So please remember uh, that we need to have all kinds of uh, idea of how we can get the illustration. So you get the illustrations in the form of a reflection copy or in the form of a uh, transmission copy. So please remember, uh, whatever be the illustration that you select, uh, there is always a description of the illustration. So you see, you, we may know who is Modi by seeing the photograph, but somebody in, uh, in another country, in Cyprus or somewhere in other place, the person may not know who is this person. So it is essential for us to give a brief description of a photograph. So we have, uh, we, 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 we just not discuss that a photograph is equal to thousand words. So for any uh, article that you publish or for any story that you publish, uh, a photograph gives life to the story. So your story is given a life. It gets life because a picture uh, gives reality. Picture attracts the reader. Picture makes him believe the story because you are almost showing the truth, and the picture is also it makes you to believe. Yes, that our artist has done some real good original work. For instance, that is because you are showing the picture. For instance, so please remember now. But uh, how do I know on, uh, what is in the picture? Every reader may not know. Some of them may know, but to make everyone know, so just as how a picture gives life to the, um, you know story or an article there is one thing a small brief description given below the photograph and that is known as caption so caption is inevitable for us we need to know what exactly is the caption i will show you for instance the photograph here uh, just a, a couple of days before kcr went to yes the hospital okay so what is this about so do you see the photograph and then you seeing of course you may read the story kcr in this post now you have a photograph, you must give some kind of an information about who is who. So here KCR, you and I may know, but a reader from say, uh, Bidar, who is Karnataka, neighboring state, he may not know, we don't know, but everybody wants to know what is this photograph about. So it is about, you know, where he is in Yashoda Hospital. Okay, what is he doing? He has gone for checkup. So almost all, uh, a good number of W's are answered here uh, for us, okay. So he's gone there. So there, the Santosh Kumar is also there. He's another MP. His nephew is also there. So nobody may know, may not know Santosh Kumar. Many people may not know. So this caption gives life to the photograph. Photograph gives life to the story. Caption gives life to the photograph. This is very essential for us. Relevance of caption is very very important. And caption writing is a skill by itself. Is an art by itself. Do not trouble that that they sometimes they, they read a, a big paragraph. Sometimes you can see in a newspaper caption and maybe slightly maybe five to six lines of a, a story below the photo. That itself becomes story as well as the caption. So story uh, included embedded into the caption also is nowadays found in some of the publications. So your caption should be simple to read and should be able to answer almost all the six elements of the question who when where what why and how by and large it answers uh, all that is needed to understand by seeing the photographs sir. and but always remember uh, photographs where we pose before the camera are uh, known as you know still photographs so we are posing and he's taking a photo how many times we take selfies uh, and every time we take movies but uh, those uh, are known as uh, something like still movies and they're not they're not really that uh, attractive when compared to something which you can call it as action photographs for instance this is an action photograph so kcr is not looking at the camera Matur kumar is not looking at the camera doctors are not looking at the camera you have taken the cam uh, you have taken the picture uh, you, know, you know without their knowing that a picture has been uh, taken so such pictures are known as action photographs 
are also known as sometimes when you take somebody you know in cricket with a tendulkar eating a six you could click it because you are able to click it because the camera is able to capture any image within a fraction of a second and such pictures are known as candid photographs so candid photography is itself a subject nowadays particularly in sports you can see in movies you can see in of always in movie or in posters you can see something known as a candid picture candid is something which you have taken in action maybe sometimes without the knowledge of the person whose photograph you have taken so please please remember that uh, some people are very photogenic uh, they may they may not really look so good uh, when you see them uh, think but when you take them photograph they look very photogenic normally children look very very photogenic as well as really attractive in both the forms but it is not so in some people where he may not look really photogenic but actually uh, when you take you know sometimes pictures uh, uh, in candid they look more attractive they look more smart it so it all depends on how the photograph is so you get photographs uh, as part of your you know publication and you should be able to have an idea about the photograph so you may say as a pro it's not my duty no sir i delegate the duty and all that but you should know the basics uh, because you are going to be the ultimate judge of having selected a photograph so you cannot say and me the collector you give the photograph no sometimes you can use your own intuition your own sixth sense that something is wrong with this photograph at that time you can change the photograph so now it is um, uh, one of the greatest advantages of photographs is that uh, we are having digital technology we are having lot of choice now uh, though it is sometimes the disadvantage also because too much of choice is also not good at that time you will get confused also they all look good which one is to be which one you need to select so, so selecting best of the best uh, selecting best of the best would be really really difficult sometimes and very very uh, challenging also so this is very essential for you to know that we have uh, this kind of a situation also then uh we we call this as whatever the images that we have you should be able to know that uh, we have what is known as images uh, what do you mean by images now all these are illustration photographs there are always certain different types of images now almost all these images are actually you know scope now in the present day scenario how do you send the images you are getting all the images in the form of uh, a tiff format or pdf or uh, you know Uh, or even a uh, you know uh, photoshop uh, now we have the eps or jpeg or jfif you get them in the form of a, a format you mean the form of a, a soft image we call it as soft image now what is this uh, thing about we should not think that always photographs are used this is a photograph for instance so this is photographs are different from for instance take this one here is a cartoon here is a line illustration then something known as line illustration where a cartoon draws with line okay for instance there are no tonal gradations this is a line illustration only pencil or pen has been made and then the line drawings have been made so this is not a line illustration whereas uh, you know in this where uh, i will show you some more art work where you can see not art so there is some color elements so there are some color elements this is not a line illustration those it looks like that but it is different so we have all those things you know as line illustration it can be even a logo also okay for instance i'll show you one logo now this is a logo so this is a line illustration artist has come artist has drawn this even you too can draw like this so this is known as line illustration so one is you will get broadly what type of illustration means reflection copy transmission copy then what are those different types of the uh, images that you use for your publication it can be like photographs it can be like drawings i have shown i have shown you what is the line art it can be simply a graph that you may give you know gra di diagrammatical representation lot of information is there in a table and you want to make it simple to the reader so what do you do you you prepare the the graph of the entire data and so that the reader is able to read that in one tenth of the time he is able to understand in a fraction of the time he is able to understand so much of data very easily uh, either through graphs or through pie charts or some diagram or some types even types also have expressions types can be used and you can try to create stunts 
we call it as typographical stunts or sometimes we can use numbers symbols or geometric designs we use maps all of you know the use of maps you know and the engineering drawings and other visuals so you could see now how many types of images are there in your publication so all these are procured by you all these are coming to you along with the text that we discussed in the last class so now you have two main things of your publication one is the text and the other one is the illustration now when you have these two things you are in a position to uh, get your publication you know in a, a very attractive way in a beautiful way in a realistic way so these are all the things that you have got so like that we have got sketches sometimes you feel i don't want the in my title cover i am take i am writing a biography of say modi uh, okay i am writing i don't want modi's photograph everybody is familiar with modi's photograph but i want to hire an artist to and ask him to draw a beautiful sketch on modi so you are spending about 10000 rupees to the artist he will draw a beautiful sketch with his hand so that is more you know um, that will be understood by the readers in a better manner so he is able to see so sometimes you can even do caricature caricature means something like a cartoon also uh, you know caricatures are drawn uh, many good artists are there who draw caricatures or or like how we have seen for instance the picture of a sand art that is done by sudarshan naik in katak he is always on the beach you can see is one of the world famous uh, sand artist world famous is the only one of the top actually is the best uh, in the world uh, sand art i want to take a picture of that for instance that of course becomes a photograph so always remember uh, you you can get this uh, in the form of sketches in the form of line drawing like a cartoonist draws a line drawing then and there he draws and it can be a caricature it can be a cartoon it can be an ideograph it gives some idea to the reader from the illustration he can make out some idea he it, it, it tickles his brain and he is intelligent to understand what is given in that particular line sketch suppose it is a cartoon a satire satire would be there it could be political satire or anything you know for instance i will tell you rk lakshman had a cartoon and 40 years back itself he gave one cartoon where he told about the fate of the congress party 40 years back he told how small through a magnifying lens that is now in the news again so in a, in a, in a line artwork that is a line artwork given by rk lakshman rk lakshman is every day every day in times of india he used to his, his cartoon was a compulsory cartoon because that make it's the reader to uh, have a smile a laugh or anything similarly all of you know in entertainments or in other places also we use what is known as trademarks all of us know about trademark they are exclusively designed they are patented they are copyrighted and so we all know the trademark of godrej or alvin or say bajaj we know the trademark of all these ones the logos we call them as insignia or we can also call them as crests or something so uh, so the queen of elizabeth buckingham palace they have one uh, you know logo we have our indian um, flag we have a logo we have the ashoka chakra we have a logo there so logos are also line drawings they are also known as line the illustrations so we need we need all these kind of things may come so pro will get the logo of his company as one of the line drawings or line illustration they are normally drawn in a bigger way a4 like that they draw and then we reduce it when you reduce it they become more sharp so whether it's cartoon or whether it's a line it can be simply a logo of your company also so this is very essential for you to know on how you so you can also hire a commercial artist who can or a, or a, or a student from a, a bachelor of fine arts college uh, you know he will be able to do something free for you also so these are all the people who are involved in making uh, sketches it can be simply a line drawing or a sketch other than the photographs that you anyway take so we all know about how to you know get these sketches so sketches also you know indicate um, action they also convey a message don't think the sketches are just like that don't get any cartoon drawn just because cartoon nagarjun was telling in a class we should have a cartoon no the cartoon should have a purpose so theoretically we say cartoon will be good but what is the use of a cartoon which doesn't have a purpose so please remember whenever an illustration is selected 
whenever an illustration is sought, we need to ensure that in, in that illustration serves a purpose. It serves it 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 uh, adds to the uh, you know quality of reading by the reader. It could be humorous. It could be even emotional. Sometimes you can also be emotional. A simple drawing with a with a nice little girl with the eye eye drops with a tear dropping from her eye, indicating that she is in a very sad state. And the story is about some rape story. So that itself shows the 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 agony, the tragedy. The immediately by seeing the sketch, and then you may perhaps go and read the story and try to you know empathize with the victim. So these are all the things that are very important. Uh, you know, it could it can always send a social message, a political message, or any other message it can always convey to the uh, reader. So many times, what happens? Why do we use photographs in newspapers? We use text. In fact, in good olden days, uh, we used uh, very few photographs for technical reasons because photograph, getting photograph, uh, getting it by the photographer, taking the film, developing it, taking a print. Uh, Enlarging it, take it all used to take a lot of time, and because of the time constraints, they used to altogether avoid a photograph. But nowadays, it is not like that. Nowadays, every story almost has a, uh, almost has a, uh, a photograph or a sketch or a line sketch. So please remember, there are many, uh, you know, cartoonists who are able to give us uh, all these things. Now, one of the important things is uh, you keep getting all kinds of illustrations and photographs. Now all are there with you, and you got the text also. And now you have edited the text. You have edited the text. You know what to be printed, what to go. Your text is ready. But uh, you should not think that your illustrations are just like that, selected and put with the story. Even while selecting an illustration for a story, you have to be very, very careful. You cannot try to do anything as you like. Let me tell you one simple thing. Again, we'll go back to the same photograph of Kesia. Now we have here a photograph here, uh, and actually while taking clicks, the uh, photographer may give you about five or six photographs of the same of the same uh, situation. So he gives you five photographs. So what will you do? You will select the picture which is relevant also, and you select it. Suppose you selected this picture. Now you will have to have a close look of this photograph. That is very very essential. Your editorial team, your editor, just as how he reads the text carefully edits the text, he has to also see the photograph very, very carefully. This is very essential. Assuming that your photograph has something where, you know, someone else is coming here and then you, you feel that something is there, then you can edit that photograph also. These are the days when you can edit the uh, photograph. I will tell you one simple example. Then you will be able to understand uh, why we need to edit the Photograph. Okay, I will tell you this example. I'm telling you about 30 years back uh, when I was working in Parliament. You know, we had to take a picture of our Parliament building. So we called a put up just then the Photoshop and other things were coming. Just the 90s, 90s uh, the Photoshop and other technology was slowly coming. But still, we were having the conventional photography only. So we called an expert photographer. We had to pay him 5,000 rupees for his one hour. A photograph that he had taken. Now he came and he took the beautiful picture of the parliament building. There's a green lawn and everything. Then there is a, uh, you know, everything is going on. Then we took a photograph and the building was looking very impressive. He gave us the prints. Then uh, suddenly what happened? Uh, our speaker, you know, the main speaker, Shivaraj Patil, was the Lok Sabha speaker at that time, noticed that, that somebody was sitting in the lawn in some corner. Nobody could see it actually. So we were busy seeing only the picture of the parliament building. We were seeing the beautiful green lawn, maybe the beautiful blue sky. But he noticed this some small image there in the one corner of the photograph where that fellow was nothing but a Moompali fellow. Somewhere in the Moompali fellow or whatever it is, some guy was there sitting in the lawn. So now he noticed that. Then we have already taken the photograph, we have paid the photographer, everything is here. Then we gave the photograph to the printer. Then we told, uh, then at that time, he noticed, hurry up. Now again, we have to call the photographer, means 5,000 again more. How do we do it now? Now, what to do now? So now he noticed it. Then luckily, we took out of technology. And so the, you all of you should know 
then when you become uh, say a pro you can you must know the greatest things advantages that technology is able to help you out uh, when you are in real trouble so now the real trouble is that you have to remove that fellow how to remove luckily the printer came and told sir now you don't worry the same photograph we can use and we will see that that fellow is removed you don't worry about that but one gap at now how can it be when there will be a gap now you don't worry about that also so what we what he did was at that time he removed that small picture he encircled that picture to be removed very carefully very meticulously very skillfully you have to spend more time and then he used one software known as photoshop so what did he do he encircled that very minutely removed it so he cut it and then he encircled a part of a grass and then put in that particular place either a, a grass there itself and then the whole thing was looking as if that fellow was not sitting so the same photograph what happened we edited the photograph so one of the most important thing that you should learn is editing of illustrations editing of photographs so i have now for instance a beautiful artwork here a beautiful artwork here but somewhere the artist you know uh, you know suddenly it spilled some ink somewhere here there some dirty spot has come in this uh, suppose somewhere uh, some dirty spot has come in this uh, otherwise the whole artwork is so beautiful i want to use this but this dirty spot is spoiling the selection of the photograph at that time what will you do at that time also you can make of what is known as the photoshop and remove that spot and copy and paste the other area so the other these lines and other things so the reader or the viewer will not be able to notice the difference because you have done the editing there so one of the important thing that you should know is that nowadays we have technology where we are able to show you uh, what is known as we are able to improve your photograph uh, in the form of what is known as in the form of what is known as uh, editing the illustration so we edit the illustration so i have a photograph and there are two uh, cashier is there and by his side three or four uh, black cat commandos are there security i don't need them i can crop them i need only cashier photograph there or maybe cashier and kavita are then security guard i don't need the security guard i can crop them crop means i just remove them uh, in the photograph so that is just how you do in text you remove some words or some sentences you can also remove a part of your photograph thanks to the availability of what is known as a software or it's also known as a graphic arts program called photoshop so this is one of the adobe photoshop now it is coming in a new name uh, the present day trend it is known as adobe indesign and this the, we are also having not only the uh, we are also having the the uh, open source uh, that is free software also available we call it as open source so photoshop is a branded one you have to buy it also you have to, it's a bit expensive when you buy the original software of course it's a different story that everybody is pirating it and trying to use it so this photoshop is a software is a graphic arts photograph it has all the features of what an artist can have so it has all the brushes it has all the tools we call it the electronic tools e tools where he is able to do it with the help of a mouse and with his fingers or with his keyboard command he is able to edit the picture just as how you would like to have it so that gives uh, uh, you know a very good uh, effect on the picture but at the same time you should also know very well most important people should know is that don't do too much of editing of the photograph if you, there is a choice remove that photograph select a better photograph with minimum minimum editing because it is time consuming in a newspaper office the fellow doesn't have time to edit the photograph at time editing the photograph is time consuming quite possible you, when you don't have a choice do it for a magazine you can do you have at least 15 days time or one month time for a newspaper you may not have even 15 minutes time so you'll have to select so try your best to see that you select a photograph with minimum of editing if it is a newspaper for instance if it is a deadline short deadline based but if you have some time athin maine mein ek bar publication aa raha hai then doesn't matter if you take some time because you can do that editing carefully please remember this the only risk involved in editing a photograph is that the originality of the photograph may take a beating 
the originality of the photograph should not be you know compromised uh, when you are editing the photograph to try to do only the minimum minimum barest retouching like a makeup artist does for a you know before shooting what do what happens when you do over makeup what happens it spoils the originality of the picture should not be compromised the truthfulness of the picture should not be compromised you have to be very very careful in advertising they compromise in advertising there is a red uh, maruti car uh, but you say no no i want this in blue i can just put the outline and make it into blue nobody will know that it is it was a red maruti car which we had turned it into blue no problem for me but it is not so in case of a photographs of say modi or anybody else we have to be very very cautious at the time of uh, editing though you have the software program which makes it successful for you so this is another example where photoshop can be used but if it is not properly used it is termed as misuse of the photograph also so there are many ways by which nowadays we deceive we are seeing too much of photoshop being used in social media instagram uh, where you know it 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 deceives it misleads uh, the viewer and the reader so i will give you another example and then we will move on to another software also so when we are dealing with this uh, photographs uh, yeah, you know um, for instance i have uh, come across an, uh, a situation a personal experience where uh, we we tried our best to use it very carefully so we we, we took the title cover uh, for a police department so this police department building we took the photograph of that building okay the building was very old uh, it was not whitewashed looking with a lot of a very old photograph Uh, old building uh, we, uh, so when we take the old building picture the old building will be there in the photograph but what we did was uh, because to make it look uh, good elegant what we did was uh, we did photoshop used it and tried to clean it any stains any marks everything we tried our best to see that it is very natural at the same time it looked as if it was whitewashed then when we showed this photograph to the dgp He said, "When did we whitewash our building? I am coming every day. I am not seeing the building. It's just the same old building. So when did we do whitewashing?" Then the 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 printer told him, "Sir, we did the photoshopping because it's a question of image of your organization. So we did a little bit of photoshopping." Then he was very happy that the editing that was done on Photoshop was real by through Photoshop was really so convincing, so realistic that as if the building has been whitewashed. that is okay but if you don't do that properly it gives a false image of the building and tomorrow somebody else will also complain how can you use this photograph when the building is like this and you got other photograph so there is a possibility of such things happening so he was very happy yes it's good when we are able to do it now i'll give you this is one example where we can try to convince the person who is who wants to use that photograph for his title cover of a particular publication okay i'll not go into uh, the entire details of uh, who and where and when and what and why and how that i will not go into this but this is an incident to me of submission for you to understand uh, why photoshop can be used properly and i'll give you another example where uh, photoshop can also be misused for instance i will tell you now all of us know that a lot of real estate business takes place and a lot of people are there who will put in their advertisement Uh, you know a beautiful layout with all greenery uh, street lights uh, uh, pond uh, water pond gate uh, arch uh, again at front of the great beautiful road you know all this internal roads external roads electric lights drainage everything is shown so beautifully and it is a photograph then you will be understanding you wondering what is this okay you were impressed by that uh, uh, catalog or a folder because you feel so attractive i must have a piece of land here so you will call that guy now that guy will call i will tell you that he will pick you up at your house in a car and take you to the site and drop you back also now you are all the more attracted now because you have seen the folder and you will always be having the image of the folder as you are going towards the site so he takes you on a long drive he offers you cool drink he is everything on the road and you are happy you have reached the site but when you come, when you get down from the car you are not able to see what is in the folder you are only able to see some rocks and rough terrain and everything is uh, you know unarranged everything then you ask that guy what is this you are showing this 
Uh, where is this? Uh, you are showing this, no? Okay, where is this? Then what he told, you know? No, no, this we are going to make it like this. It will look like this. Then they asked him, how did you get this, sir? Then he told very clearly, this is our layout only, sir. This photograph is our layout only. We did some photoshopping. So he, from his other ventures, he, he cut out some park there and put the park here. He cut out some fountain somewhere and put the fountain there. He cut out the arc and then put it there. So what he did, he did photoshopping. So he has completely drastically edited it so much where he misused it. So who will believe it? Next time when you receive a literature from a real estate fellow, nine, 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 I don't want to believe this because so because of one person misusing uh, through Photoshop, uh, such situations can also arise. So when you are doing as a PRO, in the anxiety of uh, enhancing the image of your office, don't overdo anything. Your office should also depict realistic, truthful pictures. This is important for what is known as Photoshop. So Photoshop is a software that is made. And then uh, we we have this photograph, we have the text. Then we have another software known as PageMaker. So we design the pages. Uh, one page is made and then all other pages get automatically designed in the same way, like margins, like page number, uh, number of lines in the page. All those things are automatically done with through a software. So you can get them into. So let us assume that you're publishing some um, manual full of text only, maybe a few illustrations also. And you have the entire matter of about, uh, say, 300 pages. What you do is one page, you design it properly. Only one page, it should be like this. And then you run PageMaker. It, what it will do is it will convert all the matter of 300 pages into pages automatically. So automatically your page maker, it makes the pages. So we have another software known as Illustrator. As the name implies, it is an illustrator where he can, uh, artist can do instead of a brush and a paper, he can do with his mouse. He can draw illustration. He can do wonders with that. He can draw graphic, uh, you know, illustrations. He can create graphics. He can do a lot of cut, copy, paste, modify, morph, uh, everything he can do uh, through one of the software known as Illustrator. So we have Photoshop, we have Illustrator, we have what is known as Page Maker, of course, is related to making the pages. So there's nothing really creative there in the sense you only see that the pages are properly designed with even margins, with even space between the lines, with even space between the paragraphs and the page number, position, location. All of you know that the page number can be located in six places, left bottom, center, right top, left bottom, I'm sorry, left top, center, right top, left bottom, center, right bottom. So we can arrange the uh, pages in such a, uh, you know, page numbers, uh, all those things are taken away when you make one master page and tell the page maker, you do the remaining entire information or the data, the matter into these pages, it will automatically make them into 300 pages, 297 pages or whatever it is. It makes so many pages automatically, except that uh, once it does it, uh, manual checking will always be there. Don't do anything depending completely on these software programs. So there's one more uh, software we all know is a Coral Draw. Coral Draw is another um, software, uh, very old one, 1989, and it does you know it does everything like logos. You can do any new logos, new designs. You can arrange it, layouts. You can touch up the photographs. As I told you, you're having a suppose uh, fair and lovely has a picture of a beautiful woman, and but suddenly there is a black spot on her hand somewhere and you want to remove that There's a mole maybe a mole but you want to remove that yes you can remove that either in the form of you know in the software you have all the software illustrator photoshop in design these features where you can delete where you can crop where you can cut where you can paste where you can interchange where you can transfer uh, the whole uh, thing in such a way that uh, uh, nobody will be able to think uh, that, that you have made a changes in the Photograph. So sometimes you can also make use of um, a coral draw is useful for in touching up the photographs, uh, in designing logos. It can be designing, you know, all kinds of things can be done. 
uh, always remember uh, that when we are trying to do anything, uh, do not have too much space between too much space between the lines or too much space between the uh, between the paragraphs. Okay, try to see that you are able to. Your information is, is very clear. So always remember how do you place the photograph. That is another important area. Now let now till now what we discussed. We discussed that the text arrives to us. Text is edited. Text is kept ready. Photographs come to us. Different types of photographs. We select the photograph, so we keep the photograph ready. Now, once the photograph and the text are ready, what is the next stage? Next stage is how do you arrange your story? Where do you put your story? So we can do two things. One is we can see the whole thing as a page, as a page consisting of individual stories. So you know, different news items are there. For instance, news, news stories, or your house journal, different. Uh, the stories you may have. Okay, one is that. One is within the story, how will you arrange? So once again, let us take this, for instance, uh, this particular thing, Indian missile lands in fact by accident. Why do you want to have the photograph here? Why can't you have it here, here, here? So this placement of illustration is also another skill, uh, another thing wherein on, by virtue of your your experience, you will be able to know how to position this photograph. Let us take this as a whole page. When you take all this as a whole page, you can see that photograph is there in the bottom. One in the left, one in the right, one in the top, one in the top left, one in the center. So this is also the extreme center. So all the photographs, for instance, if you take the, this whole thing as a page layout, the entire newspaper page, you have seen that these photographs are properly, uh, you know, uh, positioned place. Let us assume that uh, uh, stories are there. Now all the photographs are on the left side. So this is also on the left side completely. And this is also on. So what we mean on the left side of the story, all are on the left side of the story, it gives a different picture. So it are, they are arranged in a particular style. Maybe you can see here, for instance, this one, this one, this one. So they are now in a diagonal style. Or sometimes this one, this one, and this one. This is vertical style. Or, for instance, you can have this one, this one, and this one. They are known as horizontal style. So there are three types by which you can uh, display the illustration. So when you have this diagonal style, a vertical style, and horizontal style, you are in the position to have the page completely designed. So let us take two ways you can place the photograph. One is within the story. Suppose one story has two or three photographs, how will you arrange it? Diagonally you can arrange, vertically you can arrange, horizontally you can arrange within the story. But if all these stories are also, for instance, clubbed and the entire page is looked there also, the editor tries his best to see that all these are properly positioned so that the reader is able to have uh, photographs at regular intervals in throughout the page. He is not distracted. It's quite possible he may even miss the photographs also. So that is what we mean by what you call it as the placement of uh, illustrations. How are you all going to have that? Uh, is uh, very, very important for us. For us. Now, one important thing you should know is that um, uh, sometimes um, uh, PRO is, uh, uh, is asked to have a photo montage. So what exactly is a, a photo montage? For instance, there is a Silver Jubilee celebrations of your organization. Let us assume that there is a Silver Jubilee celebrations are going and then you can have a photo montage either in your house journal or just for display in your entrance also you can have a full collection of photographs photo montage means collection of various photos of that particular event like silver jubilee celebrations so you've been having it maybe for two days or three days or one day so you select all those relevant pictures you put the captions and there may be over eight or ten photographs or twelve photographs. They are all useful and they are all, you know, arranged in such a way that you are in a position to have them uh, in a full piece. So that is known as photo monte. Let us assume, for instance, the prime minister is visiting Hyderabad and he visits an organization. So we can't take him around all the entire factory of uh, uh, thirty acres land. We may take him in a battery car. I agree. But then sometimes the entrance itself, 
if he wants to visit, he wants to know what is in this building, you can show the entire thing like that. Sir, this is the whole unit, this is a photography. No, this is the place where you are, and this is the building we are here, and this is the thing we have got these facilities. You are arranging some beautiful photographs. So he will be able to appreciate, oh God, what a beautiful building. Quite possible, he may say, I want to go to this particular uh, place, or like he goes to see Harry Kota Isro. He may say, where is the launching pad? So by seeing this photo montage, he may show some interest. I want to go to the launching pad, or he may say, I want to go to the lab. So you can uh, take him to that particular place also. So photo montage gives him a very clear idea, any viewer about, uh, you know, how beautifully your organization uh, is uh, actually, you know, uh, is performing. So, so many photographs. Also. All these photographs can also be, you know, uh, need not be same standard size photographs. Some can be big, some can be small, some can be medium. You can, you know, it all depends on the attractive uh, the value of the, the photographs. One of the most important things that you should know is that never select dull photograph. It should be very sharp photograph and it should not be looking dull and grainy. Grainy means uh, when you enlarge a photograph, it loses its detail. So try to see that the photograph is sharp and it's not uh, grainy. So you please remember that your caption also should be visible. If it is a photo montage in an exhibit at the entrance, then you, the caption should be of a bigger font. If it is in your house journal, they can be in say 10 point or 12 point. But if it is say, looking at the uh, exhibition, you're looking at a distance of three to six feet, then it could be in about 24 point, 30 point, depending on how you're having these uh, photographs. So please remember these are all the important things uh, that you should know. But uh, so uh, now we have seen that you get, but always, always remember a PR, PR also has to sometimes source the illustrators. He has to source. Source means he has to get the photographs from outside. Because nowadays media is emerging. Now so many photos are there. And nowadays you have got all copyright factor. You cannot copy just from Google like that. Even though you give credit courtesy, picture courtesy, Google, I do copy pictures and then put it in the Google, but I mean in my blog, I write at the bottom picture courtesy, Google. So, but every time it's not like that, some of the pictures may be copyrighted. Even if it is available in Google, you cannot copy it. It will be mentioned there and copyrighted. They may even have a watermark for that. So what is essential for us is, how will you source the, uh, source the photographs? So you can source means you can get photographs. Suppose you want to do something special uh, uh, about, uh, you know, you want to mention that you have a guest house, your organization has a guest house in somewhere in Uti, and you want to get a beautiful photograph of the uh, Uti as a hill station. You can't go to Google and get to type Uti, go to images and copy it. And that. You may have to at that time outsource it. So you can call some photographer in Uti and tell him very clearly that you need an original photograph. That means he should be able to go on his vehicle with his camera and take an original photograph exclusively for your organization. Now that photograph becomes your copyright. You, you cannot take someone's photograph and then publish it also. This is one of the important things that PRO should know. And with nowadays business practices are becoming more stricter, becoming more regulatory. You should not get uh, caught in these uh, uh, small things. So don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Try your best to see that you're very professional and see that you're outsourcing the photograph. You hire a photographer, get a photograph and be the original owner of the photograph and you copyright it also. This is very essential for us. But sometimes what happens, we use it. We don't even give, even for courtesy, some acknowledgement. Sometimes you can call them and tell them, sir, I have found a beautiful photograph of yours. Can I use your photograph? I will put credit to you, courtesy, so and so. So suppose I have in my collection, Nagarjuna, I have a collection of beautiful photographs. One of them is very useful for you. Now you are sourcing. So I will tell you, I will, so, uh, you may ask me, sir, can you please give your photograph? Then no, 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 it's my copyright. I will not give. I can sell it to you. So if I sell it to you, 5,000 rupees, then I then that will be an again a, agreement. 5,000 rupees I paid, sir. So he becomes the owner of that uh, photograph automatically and he need not even acknowledge it. But if I am insisting, no, I will take 5,000 rupees and you should also give courtesy to Nagarjuna. That is also one of the arrangements. 
So when you appear with outsourcing, he has to be careful from whom he is outsourcing and what are the conditions uh, uh, that he puts uh, uh, when he is parting with that kind of a photograph. This is very, very important for all of us. Uh, so please remember that just like that you have, you know, illustrations are often sourced from Google Images, apart from other things like Orkut, Twitter, Facebook, Yahoo. But the PR should be cautious while doing so, both in terms of copyright and quality of illustration. So copyright part, I told you. Now I'll tell you illustration, um, quality of illustration. Many times, so okay, sir, everything is available. You are able to copy it. But many times I have seen PR also, you know, having a lot of trouble in actually what, you know, in getting in, uh, in getting the image from the Google, he has copied it. But when it does coming for printing, the technical guy at the desktop system, sir, you photograph panigraph, this resolution. So all photographs have what is known as a resolution. This resolution is not fit for our publication because we are printing in, say, a news print, a newspaper. So it is not possible for us to print this. So what has happened? Now you have to also keep in mind the quality of the illustration. It may look attractive on the screen when the Google, but when you try to save it into your publication, then the resolution is not matching. So there's a technical competence required to, uh, to take the illustration because ultimately, the, let me also tell you one small thing is that a no illustration or no photograph is better than a bad photograph. Don't use photograph at all instead of a bad photograph and spoiling the image of your organization. So this is a, a topic that we tried to discuss today. In detail, I hope you understood everything. I was only trying to tell you not from the book, but from the practical things that we face because I have been in this industry I know for over 40 years. So I'm able to uh, tell you all those, uh, um, uh, what do you call it as in, uh, so the ups and downs of, uh, you know, the, the production problems. Uh, I have been through it. Uh, I could face so many challenges and then overcome. And all those experiences are what I'm, I tried to tell you practically, because this is the purpose of this class is to enable you to know how practically you will be able to, you know, um, solve if you come across any kinds of uh, problems. So this is the thing for today's class. And we also have some do's and don'ts uh, that you please go through with that. We will be finishing the unit do's and don'ts is how do you, how do you utilize the photographs normally? Many people have they get a photograph at the back, they write. In the back, you never write anything on the back of the photograph. Your ballpoint pen, your pen impression will fall and this side photograph will have that uh, lettering also and that will be picked up in the uh, camera and in, by the computer and the whole photograph you are spoiled. So you have to be very careful, write a caption on a separate paper and then tip it either little, little very little gum and uh, you know paste it on the reverse side of your photograph. So the many do's and don'ts, if you see them, you will be able to understand yourself. The next time we will try to see uh, unit five, we will see what we mean by diagrammatic representation. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages of that? And what are the categories? All those things that we will see in the next class. Of course, now since uh, I don't know, since no participants are there, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So these are all the things that we need to have it. Uh, so uh, yeah, here I'm giving my blog address if you're so keen. Uh, so this is all uh, regarding various topics also. So okay, thank you very much all of you. And uh, I hope you try to understand. I'm trying to, I tried my best to put it in a very simple way. So if you are asked a question on how illustrations should be, uh, you know, what kind of illustrations you get and what are all the things that you need to know as a PRO. Okay, you as a PRO, you have a managerial responsibility, but your managerial responsibility will take effect only if you are in a position to understand at least the basics of it. I'm, I don't want you to become a printing technologist or an excellent photographer, but then you will have to have, you know, jack of all and master of none.
but then you must be able to have all nowadays you have a role of multitasking and you are a good photographer by yourself without knowing that you are a good photographer so thank you very much uh, we have now it's 11 o'clock and we'll leave the class okay thank you okay